Hey, so welcome back. I want to go over the rest of this joint A real quick. And I forgot to do the last part, which is to do the Pythagorean theorem and solve for AD. So we take A squared plus B squared and we get C squared here. So we know that that guy is 1378.86. Now, I want to come back over to my main page that we started with, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in that number, 1378.86. And this guy, we had 975. And we can look at those arrows that are squeezing in there. I can go, okay, so that is what's going on. So if I look at those arrows that are squeezing in, okay, that looks like this guy right up here, and that is in tension. So this guy here is in tension. These are squeezing out, okay, because it's what's going on inside the member, what's going on inside the member. So this one is in compression. So I can put a little C there next to that. Now let's move to joint V. I mean, I can't solve anything yet there because I have one known and one, two, three unknowns, but I can go over to C and see that I've got one, I've got two things. I could easily also go up to D at this point and, and, and work that joint, but I like to just always kind of come across the base and I'm going to go to C next. So that's where we're working. So let's look at this guy. Okay. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to, once again, I'm going to sum all of my forces in the Y. Remember that that's got to be zero. Now, when I look at this, I've got the things in red that are in Y. And so what goes up must come down. When I look at this, I have this reaction force C in the Y is 775. It's going up. Remember, this is like the teeter-totter. I put my fulcrum there, and so I need those things to balance. Well, that means I have to have 775 on this side. Well, I only have two things in the Y, so they have to be equal and opposite. Okay, they have to be equal and opposite. So I know right then that CE in the Y has to be equal to 775, and it has to be going down. Okay, now it's really important to keep up with your arrows here. Now, let's look at line segment CE. It's either going down into the right or up into the left. And if I know the Y component's going down, it has to be going down into the right, which means this guy over here is going to the right. So I can go ahead and draw my arrow there. And that means that this whole deal here is going that way, okay? So I've got those arrows and I need to keep up with them. Now, the next thing I can do is I can solve for CE and the X. And we know earlier from when we solved this, we have a 45 degree and this is also 45 degree. I want to make it really clear that the angle that I'm using to solve this is this guy right there. So if you work another one of these and these are not equal, you know, if you have some different, I'm using this one right here because I'm solving for the opposite here, okay? Mm -hmm. So make sure that you are clear with that. Now, so to do that, I'm going to go tangent of theta, in this case is 45, and I have CEX over the adjacent, which is 775. And so what I know is I can just take those things and multiply them together. And if you've already done that at home, you know it's a 45. And so you know this is also 775. I can kind of skip the math at this point. So now when I look at this guy, I have two things going in the X. Some of the forces in the X have to equal zero. Left, right. Well, this guy we know is going right. It's 775. Well, there's only one other thing, line segment BC. So it's got to be going left, and it's got to be going at the same magnitude. 
So I know it's going left, so I want to make sure I put my arrow there. Okay. The last thing is CE, and I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find that. So I'll put my this in my calculator, and I'll go 775 squared plus 775 squared, and I'm going to get 1,096.02. Now I want to make sure with all of this that I come back over to my main chart here, and I fill in my numbers. I know this one is 775. This arrow was going toward the center. This one's going to the center. Well, if the reaction forces are going toward the center inside that beam, I know that it's getting pulled apart. So this guy is in tension. Okay. This one right here, this arrow was going down and to the right, which means it's going up and to the left at joint E. You can see that. And I know the magnitude of this line. And it was 1. 096.02. So I've got all of that. I just got to make sure I keep up with my arrows on here, keep up with your arrows on here, and that makes things a lot easier. Next, we're going to move up to joint D.